So let's get let's let's go through the main topic. All right. So me showed up just in time to hear everybody tell me I'm a I got bad taste in movies. So I guess the way I approach this is I took a few examples, maybe like seven or eight movies that are divisive. I mean, I could have really called this like polarizing movies amongst horror fans. Okay. It just, but it just so happens I like all these movies. <laughs> so I and I kind of came up with this idea by accident. Because I was at work, and a lot of times, you know, I'm walking, and these ideas just start flowing in my head, and I, get, you know, I I get into debates with people about certain movies, and automatically I just started thinking, um, Halloween Kills, and now this new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, these two movies have the uh, the uh, fans just completely divided. And it seems like I'm always on the like side of things uh, uh, as opposed to the hate. Uh, like, I don't hate. I, I, I like the movies. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't know why. That's just the way my brain works. But, yeah, I, I, end up, I, I end up liking more times than not movies that are divisive. It's just weird to me. But I do. So I, I started thinking. And then all of a sudden it just came. Like, the, the, the sentence literally just came in my mind without me even thinking about it. Do I have bad taste in movies? Like I was literally just like walking down the street and I'm like, Oh my God, maybe that's it. Maybe I have bad taste in movies and there's nothing wrong with that. It's my, that's the way my brain works. You know, I try to think, but nothing happens. That's just the way it is. And I've, I've accepted that. Okay. And you should too. If you have bad taste in movies, join the club. All right. We'll accept it together. I wrote down some, uh, some ideas here, maybe some reasoning why we're getting so much, debate amongst movies because there's a reason okay there's a reason um and, and you I, we could use any of these movies all right like cult of chucky right there we could use any of these movies okay and there's a variety of reasons um the number one number one okay i'm gonna give you five reasons why why i have bad taste in movies <laughs> i i don't even know what why what why, five reasons for something okay bad taste in, i'll say we'll just call it that why i have bad taste in movies social media and fan divide we live in a time right now and i kind of touched on this at the beginning of the the stream but yeah the, the fans are completely divided not just in movies fucking everything it's exhausting everything you got to pick a side now you know and so when a high profile movie comes out, uh, comic book movies, horror movies, no matter what, um, everybody's got to, got to pick it. And it might not even be like that polarizing of a movie, you know, it, it just could be, you know, it could be Halloween, just a, a Halloween movie. People, for some reason, they start, including me, they start losing their minds over it. There's got to be some kind of debate. People have to like, scrutinize every little detail of things these days and that's another bullet point that i put on here is but social media and fan divide man that's a real thing these days and it can be kind of dangerous you know uh because it's not going anywhere internet's not going anywhere so this particular landscape of movie movie going is forever i guess unless we go um escape from la go into the dark ages but i we're everybody has a voice now is that one of my points too yeah so yeah everybody has a voice now and i think that's part of the thing too and that's a great thing you know but the thing it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because now i guess everybody's a critic you know back when we were growing up in the like the 80s and the 90s how did we get our voice out there? You know, there weren't any like, especially like in the 80s and early 90s, there weren't any message boards. There wasn't no internet. So what's up, Holly? Holly made it. You, Holly, you made it just in time because I just started the main topic. Okay. It, took, it takes me this long to get to the main topic, an hour and a half. But yeah, back in the day, if Cult of Chucky came out, we'd get pissed off. But we'd have nobody to tell except for our friends who, let's face it, guys, most of our friends probably don't like horror like we do. So it's like talking, to, you know, um, uh, talking to a dog that's just been shown a card trick. 
You know, it falls on deaf ears. But now there are no deaf ears. You, you, you can instantly, within a split second, get your opinion out there. And you can be controversial. And sometimes people want to do that. Sometimes people's like, it was okay. Ooh, but how can I be heard? Ooh, how can I, how can I like strike a chord? I'll go to my Twitter page right now and you you damn right I'm going to strike a fucking chord. You just wait and see what I say about this movie. Oh, they're going to love this. I'm going to piss them all off. I'm guilty of this too, by the way, guys. Yeah, so <laughs> it's power. That's powerful to have that voice, to be able to get out there. And sometimes you're drawing the line. You're drawing the line in the sand. And, and, and everybody that's going to reply, they're either going to go on to the right or to the left of the line, you know? So that's part of the reason why a lot of times these movies get a lot more hoopla than they should. It's good for the marketing because people will see it. But yeah, I think that's a big reason. Um, next one is internet and fanboying. And these all apply to me, guys, okay? And they're not making me look good at all, okay? With certain franchises like Halloween... Uh, you know, pick your poison, Marvel, DC, all of it. We are all fanboys or fangirls and we get passionate. You know, I've even told people do not ever take my opinion on any Halloween movie or Star Wars movie on my first review because it's usually, it's a knee jerk reaction and these are movies that I am so freaking passionate about. So by the time I'm sitting in my uh, theater chair, I'm shaking. I'm Halloween Kills, guys. I was literally shaking. And the guy sitting next to me, I went to a press screen. And, and most of these press people are not Halloween fans, okay? And the guy's like, he didn't see me shaking, but he could tell I was excited. And I was like, this is my Star Wars. <laughs> That's what I literally told him. I literally looked at the guy sitting next to me. I was like, this is my Star Wars. And I started like explaining to him, you know, the, the ins and outs of the Halloween franchise and why this character does this and what continuity this is. And I'm sure by the time I told him that stuff, he wanted to see this movie even less, <laughs> you know? And that's just the way we are when it comes to our movie passions you know um some of you are are that way with scream some of you are that way with uh nightmare on elm street and uh sometimes our opinions our initial reactions can be a little different than they are when they settle in you know that's what happened to me with halloween 2018 once i settled in okay just a movie it was good but yeah i'm not like i'm not freaking out like I was when I first saw it. That's the bad thing about me being a YouTube reviewer. Um, which goes into my next point. And this might get me in trouble. <laughs> this might get me in trouble. It won't, but YouTube reviewers uh, and I guess just the current critical landscape. Um, a lot of times us reviewers, we have the quickest access to a movie sometimes earlier than when it comes out and i think fans take what we say to heart and and i think they look at us as some type of authority you know like um if if lee says this movie's good then i'm going to take that to the bank this movie's going to be good and i think that's a bad thing <laughs> i do i think the way it should be done and like I said, I'm getting myself in trouble. I've probably, <laughs> I've probably lost half of my subscribers. Like, Lee's telling us not to watch his videos. Well, no, I, well, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is go into the movie without watching a single review. Because that's what you did back in the day. Go into the movie without watching a single review. Form your own opinion. Let the movie settle in. Then, after you've let the movie settle in, then go to YouTube and, and watch reviews, you know, because you might be missing out. Like, I'll give you an example. Like, when I saw the, the latest Resident Evil movie, I didn't like that movie, almost hated it. And I'm sh I was reading through my comments after I reviewed that movie, 
and there were some people stating, thank you, I'm not going to go watch this. And it, automatically I was like, damn, I didn't mean to do that. You know, if, if don't take my word for it because you might like that movie. You know, it's, it's like, it's like Halloween six. Some of you hate Halloween six and, and I love Halloween six, but I wouldn't want to tell you Halloween six is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Or I guess even better yet, Halloween 6 is horrible. Don't dare waste your time. And then you don't dare waste your time and you might be missing out. So I think we place a little bit too much credit on YouTube reviewers uh, and I guess especially YouTube reviewers. But even back in the day, like I didn't watch Siskel and Ebert. before. I liked watching Siskel and Ebert, but I didn't watch Siskel and Ebert before I watched a movie. As a matter of fact, I probably watched a Siskel and Ebert review maybe twice uh, out of the entire 80s. So, yeah. And I think YouTube, it's kind of a dangerous thing. Not really dangerous, but I'm thinking out loud here. But I think sometimes I just feel bad. Like, I, I don't want to steer people away from a movie that they might love, you know, because we're all different. We all have different opinions on movies and we all have different tastes. So if I can encourage you guys to do anything, I would say don't put so much stock in YouTube, okay? Watch the movie on your own first. If you can do that, you know? Because here's what happens now. And I'm guilty of this too. People go on YouTube and they start searching for reviews or whatever, you know, just the latest video. And they look at our, our fucking stupid faces, the reviewer face that we give. And we're either doing this or we're doing this, you know? And right away, we're pretty much trying to tell you how we feel about the movie. I think that's so fucking stupid. (laughs) And again, I'm guilty of it. I do it too. Sometimes I try to throw you the other way though. Like that's what I did with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I, I gave you the face that's the opposite of what I thought about the movie. I th- and I think that's what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to like close my eyes and randomly pick a, uh, a, 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 what do you call it? I call it like a body PNG. That, that's, that's freaking uh, Photoshop speak or whatever. I call it a body PNG. So now randomly, I think I'm just going to close my eyes and just drag a body PNG over there. So you're not going to know what I'm thinking. But yeah, you get my point here. You are, I'm no better than you when it comes to figuring out if a movie's good or not. I'm not at all, you know? So go with your own gut. If you want to watch the movie, then watch the movie and then then come and check out the review, you know? So that way, and plus that's just liberating, you know? Isn't that cool when you go into a movie and you didn't know anything opinion-wise beforehand? You were just like, that's kind of cool. Now I've seen it. Now I can watch what, Chris Stuckman thought of the movie, you know, and, and, and Chris Stuckman didn't like the movie. That's okay. It's not a big deal. I liked it. He didn't like it. It doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. So yeah, I think, uh, believe me, I don't take for granted my YouTube career. I guess you could call it a career. I, uh, I love what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. And I really, I didn't get into it to sway people on movies. I got into YouTube because I wanted to talk about movies. That's it. I just wanted to have a discussion about movies. I wanted to do what I'm doing right now. If I'm being honest, this is the part that I love the most. Reviewing movies, that's work. Like, I mean, that's fucking work. Like, I have to freaking jot down all these bullet points. I have to sit in the chair. I have to go through my process. And it takes me 30 minutes just to sit in the damn chair anyway. Uh, You know, set up all these lights. And then after that, I'm like, oh, God, now I got to edit this. But I, you know, I like to put out a good product. But yeah, the reason I got into YouTube, though, was just talking about movies. I never got into YouTube to say, hey, don't watch Cult of Chucky, okay? If I could do anything in my YouTube YouTube journey, I want to make sure people don't watch Cult of Chucky, which I'm the opposite of that. I actually like Cult of Chucky. <laughs> so, okay. Next, I spent too much time on that one, but I hope I gave you guys some good advice there, okay? Next point fan expectations know your genre oh boy okay uh this the the i guess you could apply this to like um texas chainsaw massacre is the perfect example of this all right 
There were people comparing. How did you like this movie? There were people comparing Texas Chainsaw Massacre to more like highbrow movies like Dune. And you, how could you like this movie more than you like Dune? And I'm just using that as an example. Nobody said that, all right? Um, they're two completely different animals, okay? I Sometimes I want a cheeseburger, and sometimes I want a steak, okay? Dune being the steak, Texas Chainsaw Massacre being the cheeseburger, or it's more like a, a barbecue pulled pork sandwich, which is what I had for lunch today. That's I had a Texas Chainsaw Massacre lunch today. I guess that's what I had. And so when I go into this movie, I'm not going to approach it like I do, um, you know, like a David Fincher movie. You know, I, I, it's a different animal. And for, for some reason, there were people like with pitchforks after this movie. And that's fine if you don't like it. That's completely fine. But don't go into people's comments or, or and get all angry at people for liking the movie that you didn't like. To me, that's so freaking stupid. It's, it's moronic. I hate to say it, guys, but if you are telling people that they are stupid for liking Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you're a moron, okay? Thank you, Sarah. She says, you're doing a great job, Lee. Thanks so much for all the work uh, you put into delivering us great video. Thank you so much, Sarah. That's really nice. I just called a lot of people morons <laughs> that are probably watching this. <laughs> but I'm serious. Like, don't, don't give people the business because they like something, you know? Know your genre. It, it, people, people's expectations for a silly slasher movie were completely stupid. It's a, I'm not saying you have to like it, but I'm saying when you scrutinize it and overanalyze everything about it, um, you're kind of defeating the purpose of what the movie is in the first place. It's, it's a silly Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie with uh, a lot of gore and kills. That doesn't mean you have to automatically like it because it checks that box. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is just know your genre. Know what you're comparing this movie to, okay? Know your expectations when it comes to certain movies. I don't look at I don't look at Texas Chainsaw Massacre the way I don't look at Star Wars, which is also the way I don't look at a David Fincher movie. They're all di a Marvel movie. Di they're all different animals. They're just all different animals and I approach all of them accordingly, you know? Um Last one, and I like this one, okay? Did I just pat myself on the back? Okay. I like this one. All right. And uh, Jason Smith from Sinister Cinema Reviews, I think we both came up with this idea at the same time because we were talking, because he liked Texas Chainsaw Massacre too, but we were more talking about the reactions of people. And I stated this line. I stated, if this movie came out in the 80s, uh, if, like, if this movie came out 30 years ago, this movie had been out 30 years, right now people would be like, man, this is one of the better Texas... I mean, like, I mean, have you seen blood and gore like that? I think people's reaction today would be that of that movie had it come out like 30 years ago. And, like literally right after I did that, uh, Jason sent me a screen cap that he posted like on one of his, uh, his Facebook group. If this came out in the 80s, you would have loved this movie. You know, I truly believe that not everybody, but I truly believe that some people, because they over scrutinize everything so much. Did we do that to slasher movies in the eighties? Like Friday, the 13th part seven. If, if that came out today, star mummy, what the fuck is that? Get that piece of shit out here. This movie is an F F minus. How dare you put a star mummy character in a... You know, people would like flip out over... Because they over-scrutinize character decisions in movies these days. You know? And that definitely ties into some of the movies I'm going to show you here in a minute. All right? So, so I guess that's five observations about fandom when it comes to horror movies these days. That, that's what I'll call it. Five observations. Okay? Do you agree with that, though, though guys? Like, think about... Really think about that before you answer if Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 came out in 1985, what, do you think the reaction to it would be better today? Like if that movie came out in 1985, it'd been out all these years, thinking back on it, 
do you think people would be freaking out about it or, or do you think it's because of the current landscape you know because i think people would be like damn that for, that bus massacre you can kind of compare it to like halloween six wasn't that fucking crazy that, i mean that scene's even more intense than the lab massacre in halloween six you know so i th- i think just don't be so quick to judge a certain time period uh, and what i mean by that is we're listening to everybody around us these days about PC culture and some of it's right. And some of it's, some of it's just of the time, you know, these are, these are issues that like it or not, we're dealing with and they're going to bleed into movies. And as long as they do it, I guess in the right way and and not beaten over the head, you know, beating the audience over the head, I have no problem with tackling current social issues even having fun with them, if they're done, uh, I guess, if they don't get in the way of the main point of the movie. And to me, the main point of Texas Chainsaw Massacre was still Leatherface cooking fools, right? That's what he did. So Holly gets it. She says, I think the 80s were more accepting of horror, but still love TCM 2022. Yeah, and that's completely fine. I just think people are a little bit hard on movies because of everything they're hearing around them. That's another thing too. Never mind the time frame. But we are so influenced by our, our friends around us. You know, a lot of times, what, what do you guys do? First thing you do when you go see a movie is you get on your DMs and you probably text one of your friends. Like say, like, like Sarah, just use this hypothetically, like Sarah and Brendan Hale right there. If they were like great friends, Brendan might say, I just saw Texas Chainsaw Man. Oh, I fucking hated it. It was horrible. And he'd go to Sarah, who might be his best friend. Sarah. Did you see Texas Chainsaw Massacre? It's fucking horrible. And then it spreads from there. You know, it spreads from there. That's just that's just the way things are now. People, Things weren't really like that back in the 80s, you know? A lot of times I didn't even know a movie was coming out until I walked past the theater and I saw the poster on the wall. That's how I found out about Rocky IV. Oh, shit, they're making a Rocky IV movie. Now, the poster's coming out in three months, guys. Can you believe this? I got my clock set. I'm counting it down. As soon as that Halloween poster comes out, I'm gonna make a video and we're gonna we're gonna scrutinize the fuck out of it for the next two hours. It wasn't like that back in 1985. It wasn't like that at all. Okay? It was oh shit. New Rocky Four movie. Woohoo! 